Hey folks, David Dole here. As you can see, I am not visible on screen. This is a, a rare video where you cannot see me, and it's because I hurt my neck. <laughs> so I either, I don't know, I, I pinched a nerve or I pulled something on my neck. It makes it really hard to sort of move around and um, really produce a video that I would want to produce. Uh, I would just look weird on screen, basically, is why I'm not on video. But um, hopefully this neck thing gets cleared up soon. But I do still want to shoot something as I'm doing right now. So this is uh, some coverage on the Beta O'Rourke versus Ted Cruz debate from last night. This, of course, is for the uh, Senate seat for the uh, the midterms next month. Now, this debate overall, I uh, there are ups and downs. So in this video, I actually just really want to focus on the ups, the uh, the top three moments from Beta O'Rourke from last night. Now. I mean, I need to be honest here. It wasn't the greatest performance. These, uh, the problem with these sorts of, with any debate really, is a lot of it is about your delivery and what you're able to counteract and the, really the, the performance of it as opposed to what your platform actually is. So for someone like me who really cares about uh, the policies you push forward and how you've represented people in the past, your your history on issues, if you do keep your word, that sort of thing, if you take corporate PAC money. Um, these are all issues that, I mean, they can come up in a debate, but because the debate is so much about the performance, they can often, those, sort, those sorts of facts can often get lost in the actual translation on screen. So with that said, uh, let me get to the first uh, of these three clips here. So I'm going to go in sort of reverse order. So the, uh, I guess the least best <laughs> to, to the, the best, uh, clip from Beto or work. I'm going to be, uh, totally honest here. You're not going to see a lot of Ted Cruz in these clips. And it's because I really can't stand him. He is a terrible liar. Uh, <laughs> Ted Cruz cannot stop lying. He, he's it's lies on top of lies on top of lies. And I think that's, that's part of the problem when debating someone like Ted Cruz, because in order to get back at him, you have to sort of unpack all of those lies and then still be able to find time to make your own points. So Beto O'Rourke, I think, struggled in a bit of that. He kept trying to play, uh, he played defense more than he played offense, and that is not how you should be attacking Ted Cruz. But uh, with that said, let's go to the first clip, and this one is on tariffs. Really interesting to hear you talk about a partisan circus after your <laughs> last six years in, in the U.S. Senate. Um, listen, um, if, if you have this special relationship with President Trump, um, then, then where is the result of that? Um, you are all talk and no action. Um, the tariffs that the president has levied, the trade wars that he has entered this country into, is hurting no state more than it's hurting Texas. Our farmers, our ranchers, our producers, our manufacturers, and our exporters. Right here in San Antonio at the Toyota plant, where Amy and I bought our Tundra and met the folks who made it. Yes, we have problems with other countries around the world. China dumping aluminum and steel, manipulating their currency. And I want to make sure that we stand up to China. But when have we ever gone to war, including a trade war, without any allies? And that's exactly what the president, with Senator Cruz's help, would have us do. We've alienated the European Union. We've alienated Canada and Mexico. We've alienated all other potential partners, and we're going it alone against China, and it is not working. Just listen to the farmers, and I know you haven't had the chance to, to visit every county, but I have, and I've listened to them, and they are hurting. And the anxiety and the uncertainty of not knowing when these trade wars will end, or the certainty of knowing that when those trade wars do end, those buyers in those other countries will find other people from whom to have bought from. And they will no longer be coming to Texas to buy what we grow, what we raise, what we export, and what we, what we manufacture. We need a senator who will work with the president when we can time. and stand up to him where we must. And on these tariffs, time, we sir. must stand up to him. So that was just a great response there, I think, from uh, Beto or work on, on tariffs. Some uh, choice quotes here. Uh, Ted Cruz is all talk and no action. That was a quote that Beto O'Rourke used a lot throughout the debate, I'll talk, no action. And, uh, you know, it, that talking point is good. Um, I think he has some other ones. The, the third clip is uh, where Beto O'Rourke really hits Ted Cruz. And I think O'Rourke says something in that clip that he should have used more often during the debate. I'll talk about that when we get there. 
But um, the beginning of that clip, you hear people laughing at Ted Cruz. <laughs> that was, I think, one of the only uh, one of the only two times I believe that you actually heard the audience. So they were laughing at him there because Ted Cruz was talking about how oh, we, you know, we, we can't be partisan. All this crap about uh, Beto O'Rourke wants you know left wing judges, left wing actors, uh, la- or he's all about left wing activism and all this crap. And then <laughs> Beto O'Rourke is like. What are you talking about? <laughs> like you, you are the most partisan uh, senator in the Senate. So, um, and I mean, the, the laughter there in the room. I mean, people know that Ted Cruz is full of shit on a regular basis. So it was good to hear that. It was it was good to actually be able to, you know, recognize that there are the, the people of Texas uh, do understand that Ted Cruz is full of shit a lot of the time, if not all the time. Um the other quote there I think is worth mentioning that Beto O'Rourke uh, said there. Quote, when, we ha- uh, when have we gone to war without allies? I think that is a great way to frame it. So th- that was, of course, about the trade war, um, how the U.S. has essentially got into a, you know, trade disputes with, with everyone around the world. And how do you have any leverage if you have no allies on your side? If you, if sure, like attack China on, on, uh, on some issues on trade, but... When you're also attacking Canada and Mexico and the EU and you know these other partners that are nowhere near, um, or nowhere near have the issues that China does with you, it sort of it puts you in this spot where you aren't able to fight these sorts of battles as you would be otherwise if you had those allies on your side. So I think that was a, a great point there from Beto O'Rourke. Let's go to the next clip now. That is, uh, so this one is the second best clip, and this one is on the debt and corporate PACs. Speaking of balance and budgets, um, only one of us has, with good friends in El Paso, started a small business, uh, met that payroll every week, balanced the books, made sure that we delivered for our clients. Only one of us has served at the local government level every single year, balancing the budget, seeing each other not as Republicans and Democrats, but as council members entrusted with a fiduciary responsibility to deliver for the taxpayers of El Paso. Every single year we did. And for Senator Cruz to say that this isn't going to bust the budget at a time of $21 trillion in debt when we're on track to deficit spend to the tune of a trillion dollars a year, he voted to add $2 trillion. And those tax cuts disproportionately will flow to corporations who are already sitting on record piles of cash and the already wealthy in a country that is riven with income inequality unseen since the last Gilded Age. Why? In the days just before and just after that vote, Senator Cruz accepted $120,000 from the political action committees who represent the corporate interests <laughs> that benefited from this tax cut. Why does he vote for this? Why does he vote for internet companies to sell your private browsing data to the highest bidder without your consent? Why does he not vote for universal background checks in a country that loses 30,000 people to gun violence every year? Follow the money. In each of these cases, if you look at the political action committee contributions to Senator Cruz, it helps to explain the reasons for his vote and how corrupted Congress has become. I don't take PAC money, not a dime. I always and only represent the people of Texas. So this video, this clip, I think is much better than the uh, the first one I showed there. So this this really this is the message that Beto O'Rourke should have went with the entire time, should have kept hitting the entire time, that Ted Cruz is corrupt, that you can directly see how the money that he receives from corporations, from big donors, impacts his votes. So he gave three examples there, talked about the uh, 120000 he took from corporate PACs before and after the vote for the, uh, the tax cuts for the rich, talked about how his votes or how money has affected his votes on private, um, giving private internet data away how uh, money has inf- impacted his votes on background checks. So this is what should have been hammered. Uh, honestly, every answer. Keep hitting on this. Ted Cruz is not about Texas. Ted Cruz is for himself. Ted Cruz is about the rich. Ted Cruz is about the donors. Ted Cruz is there to enrich himself and to raise his own profile at the expense of the people uh, of Texas. That's what O'Rourke should have hit on the entire time. So this was a great answer. This was not the entire the entire debate was not like that. Um, but it should have been. And uh, I like how we, he ended there. So it's super important to point out for, for uh, O'Rourke to point out that he does not take corporate PAC money, that he is free from that. So that's an important point to make. He, he maybe should have made that point before he went in on Ted Cruz. 
But regardless, I'm glad he made that point and then also talked about how Ted Cruz is uh, corrupted. Now let's get to what I think is... Really, it's just, I think, maybe 10 seconds of this clip, of this next clip that's maybe about a minute and a half long. But um, this 10 seconds is what I want to see more from... Uh, or what I want to see uh, more of uh, from Beto O'Rourke. So listen for the time when, um, in this clip, when Beto O'Rourke goes in on Ted Cruz about his lying. Watch. Look, a robust energy sector is good for all of Texas. There are millions of jobs that depend on a robust oil and gas sector. And, and Congressman O'Rourke's record voting against Texas oil and gas, voting against energy, that hurts the economy, it hurts jobs, it's, it, it's not right for Texas. And let me point out, all of those oil and gas workers, they buy homes, they buy cars and trucks, they get health care, they, they give to churches and schools. And by the way, the University of Texas and Texas A&M get hundreds of millions of dollars from our energy that, sector. That's your time, Senator. Let, let's move on to a 90-second response from Mr. O'Rourke. This is what you can expect over the course of this debate. Uh, Senator Cruz is not going to be honest with you. He's going to make up positions and votes that I've never held or have ever taken. He's dishonest. It's why the president called him <laughs> Lying Ted, and it's why the nickname stuck, because it's true. Um, look, the, the climate is changing, and man-made climate change is a fact. 300 years after the Enlightenment, we should be able to listen to the scientists and follow their advice and guidance. And they tell us that we still have time, but the window is closing to get this right. If we're going to make our commitment to the generations that follow and not just think about the next election or our political career or pursuit of, of the White House, then, then we can make the right decisions now. We can support Texas being a proud energy leader in oil, and in gas, but also in renewable energy. Today, Texas leads the country. We're number one in the nation in the generation of renewable wind power. We're number five and moving up quick when it comes to solar. The two fastest growing jobs in the United States of America today, wind and solar jobs. We can continue to grow this economy. We can reject the false choice between oil and gas and renewable energy. Make sure that we produce and refine and transport and use our energy resources more responsibly. And listen, this isn't one political party saying this. This is people of both parties in every single county in Texas that we've had the chance to listen to people. These are folks who work in the energy industry. Okay, there you go. So I think it's obvious the uh the five or ten seconds I was talking about there, the quote from Beto O'Rourke, it's why the president called him lying Ted, and it's why it stuck, because it's true. Damn. That should have been... Beto O'Rourke should have called Ted Cruz lying Ted a number of times. Anytime that O'Rourke went to correct Ted Cruz about something, he should have said, there you go, there's lying Ted again. So he got this wrong. This is what, this is what, he, just, this is what he just said. This is how he's lying. He should have done it every time. So, unfortunately, that was just one moment. It was one moment near the beginning, uh, maybe the first 10 minutes of the debate, where he calls him lying Ted. But, I mean, I I don't know why O'Rourke is being nice. <laughs> like, I, I can understand this sort of, this sort of uh, apprehension in a primary race where you may have to end up supporting the person you are running against. Um, like the way Bernie Sanders was, I think, too kind to Hillary Clinton during the primaries. Uh, even though I disagree with that kindness, I at least understand it. But when it comes to Beta O'Rourke, I mean, why? There is, there is zero need or zero reason to be kind to have kid gloves on Ted Cruz. You need to go after him. And people like that. Voters want to see that. Voters want to see energy. And look, it doesn't have to be dirty. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, offensive. Just be honest. Be honest because the facts are on your side. Ted Cruz does not have the facts on his side. So when you don't have the... When, when you as the Democratic nominee, when you as Beto O'Rourke, you have the facts on your side on these issues, whether it's on health care, whether it's on renewable energies, whether it's on balancing budgets, you have the facts on your side. You can hit Ted Cruz on his not only on his lies, but also on his positions that are also based on lies. Those positions that he only holds because of the money that Cruz takes. Why don't you go harder? So I look, 
I don't know how this race is going to end up because Beto O'Rourke, from what I saw, is was losing a bit in the polls after the the first debate. Um, the first debate, which you know, uh, was largely similar to this. It was a lot of you know short moments of oh good, Beto O'Rourke just said something great, but then the rest of it's like uh, this typical politician bullshit, blah 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 blah, like. You can see that Beto O'Rourke is sort of riding the line between the old style, standard, uh, boring politician, establishment politician, and this new wave of progressives like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. O'Rourke is somewhere in the middle, and I think he should be all the way over to the Ocasio Cortez side of that division because that then allows you to be in a position where you are really open and honest and forceful with your positions and not these stupid platitudes, not this crap about this is why uh, Democrats and Republicans can work together and blah, blah, blah. All that is just complete bullshit. Just just stop it. Talk about the issues. Talk about the policies. Push what push the facts out there. Again, the facts are on your side. Why are you afraid of them? So, look, <laughs> I'm going kind of hard on O'Rourke here for a video that's supposed to be uh, sort of praising uh, parts of this debate. But it's just because there is so much potential here. And to see that potential wasted, and or not just not really wasted, but not not pushed to its full potential, is just it's it's disappointing, and it bothers me as somebody who, you know, uh, really wants to see Ted Cruz out. <laughs> I mean, I'll be completely honest here. I want to see Ted Cruz out more than I want to see Beto O'Rourke in. So Beto O'Rourke is he, he's a fine politician. He's he's I mean he's great. He's he's great for Texas, but. Ted Cruz is a garbage person, <laughs> so we need to clean out the garbage, and, you know, if somebody comes in who's not perfect, but they're acceptable, they, they do have the right position on many issues, and they are absolutely head and shoulders above and beyond who the current person is, like Ted Cruz right now in Texas, then for me, that's good enough for now, but you have to be able to hit these people. Hit Ted Cruz where it hurts. If you put on the kid gloves, you are not going to win.